Bum, ba, da, the Colette Olympics. Hello, fellow brawlers. I'm Kara Simon. It is time for the Colette Olympics. And the crowd goes wild. We are going to cover everything that you need to know about Colette, okay? We are going to cover exactly how her mechanics work, and then we're going to compare her against every other brawler in the game by seeing how well she does in the Brawl Stars Olympics events. Then I'm going to talk about how strong I think she's going to be, and you're definitely not going to want to miss that because it's uh, kind of interesting. Let's jump right in because she is one of the most unique brawlers that have ever been released in the game. Colette Overview. Colette is a chromatic brawler, okay? She's going to have a legendary drop rate during Season 3 of the Brawl Pass, and then her drop rate will decrease to Mythic and then Epic in Seasons 4 and 5. Or you can unlock her in Tier 30 if you buy the Brawl Pass. And as an added bonus, using code Kairos when you buy the Brawl Pass will help prevent you from becoming like this guy. And, well, we all know what happened to him. K-A-I-R-O-S, code Kairos in the Brawl Star Shop. You Star this is what Colette looks like when you unlock her, and as you can see, she is obsessed with the other brawlers, and she collects personal items from them to keep safe in her scrapbook. Brawl Stars forever! I'm gonna catch you! I just want your autograph! Oh, one, one for, for the, the collection. collection! And when she dies, she falls on her back, almost forgetting to keep her scrapbook secure, which she quickly remembers right after that. Colette's attack taxing shot. For Colette's attack, she sends out a kissy heart attack that takes whatever you owe. The more HP you have, the more damage she deals. She deals 35% damage to however much HP her target has at the moment, and that's true whether the enemy is level 1 or level 11. And it's also true if she is level 1 or a level 11, which makes her arguably the best brawler to play against a higher level players. One thing that does change from level 1 through level 10 is the minimum amount of damage that she will deal to enemies. At level Level 1, Colette will deal a minimum damage of 200, and at max level, she'll deal a minimum of 280 damage to make it possible for her to finish off enemies with her attack. But it's going to take a lot of attacks to do that. She requires 6 attacks to take Tick out, and she requires 9 attacks to take out El Primo with just her attack. Another thing that scales based off of Colette's level is how much damage she can deal against special targets. By special targets, I mean Brawl Boxes, Heist Safes, Ike Turrets, Siege Bots, as well as enemies in the weak and special events. Spawnables like Jesse's turret or Nita's bear do not count as special targets, which means that Mr. P is like Colette's worst nightmare. Recently, he's been in a lot of my nightmares as well. At level 1, she deals 1,000 damage to special targets and 1,400 damage at max level. So how do showdown power-ups impact Colette's damage? For every power cube that Colette has, she deals an additional 3.5% of her target's health in damage. This means that if Colette has 19 power cubes, she will deal 101.5% of a target's current health. In other words, she will one-shot any other brawler with zero power cubes. And they do have to have zero power cubes, though, because although an enemy's health increases when they pick up a power cube, cube, Colette's attack ignores the additional health that they get when they pick up a power cube. Instead, it takes whatever percentage the target's health is currently at and deals 35% to that percent of whatever the target's regular health would be if it was not powered up by cubes. I know it's confusing, but all you really need to know is that sh her damage does not increase based off of the enemies getting buffed by their own power cubes. Colette's super. Time to collect. With her super, Colette dashes back and forth holding out her scrapbook so she can snatch personal items from enemies to collect them in her scrapbook. She can even dash out over water, but if she gets hit by a wall midway, she's going to stop and turn right back. She can get stunned while dashing with her super, so keep that in mind. The damage from her super is also based off of the enemy's health. The super deals 20% of her target's maximum health no matter how much HP they actually have, which is different than the way that her attack works, where it's based off of the amount of HP that their target currently has. This makes her super the best way for Colette to finish off enemies. If she can land three attacks on an enemy and her super deals damage twice, she will finish off her target no matter how much maximum health they have. This is just as true as when she's facing Tick versus a Frank. Now, her super only deals damage one time at max range, so if an enemy is at maximum range or you're worried about only hitting them once, you'll need to get them below 20% health in order for you to take them out. That happens after Colette has hit an enemy with four attacks in a 1v1 situation. As a side note, Colette's super does the same amount of damage against special targets as her regular attack does. Colette's gadget. 
Nah, uh When Colette activates this ability, her next attack will deal 40% of her current health as damage. This means that the most damage she can deal with this gadget is 1,792 damage when she has full health. Now, because of the way that this attack works, this means that it is never useful to use this gadget against a brawler who has more than 5,120 health because she will actually deal less damage with her gadget than with a regular attack. And if Colette is below 2,695 health, she will deal less damage using this gadget against a maxed out tick than with a regular attack. Basically, this gadget is another way that Colette can finish off an enemy brawler who is under 1,792 health when Colette is at her max HP and she doesn't have her supercharger. She doesn't want to use it for some reason. And you are going to want to be careful about when you use this gadget because there are times when it is better for you to use her regular attack instead. Colette's star power push it. With this star power equipped, all enemy brawlers that are hit by Colette's super are carried to the furthest point of her super. This means that she'll have the ability to interrupt abilities as well as knock the brawl ball out of brawler's hands. Now, one thing that's important to note is that because of how her super works, there's a bit of distance where this push at star power will make it so that her super will only deal damage once, where her super would normally be able to deal damage twice. This only happens when her target is near the end range of her super, so keep that in mind. Now that we know how Colette's abilities work, let's put her through a bunch of tests that are designed specifically to see how she does against all other brawlers in various situations. We're going to start with Colette's worst test and then make our way up to her best test, which might surprise you. The boss test. This test is designed to measure how much damage a brawler's DPS is over the course of a match, but it's actually not very fitting for Colette since her damage is set at 1,400 and she'd normally deal varying amounts of damage against enemies. She does get help from her super to add to the damage, but it takes her 1 minute and 31 seconds to complete this test, placing her in 33rd out of the 39 brawlers. The dive test. This test determines a brawler's effectiveness at dealing damage under high pressure situations. I've tried this multiple ways and Colette's best way to deal damage to the Ike is to use three quick attacks before she dies. She takes too much damage from the turret for her gadget to help her and if she uses her super in any kind of combination, she only deals damage twice before dying. Colette takes 30 seconds in this test and is not great at diving, which is interesting because her super is a very dive type of mechanic. The swarm test. This test measures how well a brawler is able to deal with multiple targets. The best way for Colette to complete this test is to use her super and star power to push all of the bots into one clump and then repeatedly super onto them. It takes her 13.3 seconds to clear the swarm, which places her in 30th for this test. The supercharge test. Using four attacks, Colette requires 2.9 seconds in order for her to completely charge up her super with her attack. If she already has her super and is able to hit an enemy twice with it, she can recharge her super with only three attacks, which requires 2.6 seconds. This puts Colette in 28th for the supercharge test. The survival test. Colette doesn't have any way to heal herself or shield damage, so she relies on her 4,480 health to keep her alive. She survives for 11.1 seconds, which ties her with several other brawlers for 25th place, including, but not limited to, Leon, Jesse, and Terra. The assassin test. In three seconds, Colette's able to unload three attacks and use her super to deal damage twice to an enemy target. That's enough for her to take out any brawler in the game, no matter how much health they have. And against a Frank with his sponge star power, she's able to deal 10,060 damage, which places her in 20th place for this test. The reload test. It takes Colette 21.5 seconds for her to completely unload and reload her attack 10 times, which gives her an average reload speed of 2.15 seconds. This places her in 19th for this test and ties her with Sandy, Jackie, and Jesse for how quickly she reloads her attack. The attack range test. Colette has an attack range of eight and two thirds tiles, which is the same attack range as Bo. This places her in 19th for the attack range test, which is about right in the middle of all of the brawlers. The super range test. Colette's super has an effective range of 10 and 2 thirds tiles, which is long enough for her to place in 15th for the super range test. This is slightly longer than Poco's super and slightly shorter than Mortis's and Colt's supers. The three attack test. Now this test measures how much damage a brawler can deal with three quick attacks. Against a Frank with his sponge star power, she's able to throw two quick attacks, then activate her gadget and attack a third time, which is enough for Colette to deal 7,601 damage. This places her in 12th place for this test, though she would deal much less damage against any other brawler. The box test. Now I haven't done a box test Olympics video yet, but the idea is to find out how many power cubes are required for a brawler to be able to open up a box with only three attacks. In essence, how easy is it going to be for a brawler to ramp up their ability in Showdown? Colette requires five attacks to open up her first box. With one power cube, she's able to open up a box with only four attacks, but in order for her to open up a box with three attacks, she requires five power cubes. 
With Colette's lower reload speed and the inability to deal splash damage, she does not ramp up very well in Showdown based off of the box test. The Super Test Against a Frank with his Sponge Star Power, Colette is able to deal 2012 damage twice for a total damage of 4024 with a single Super. This places her in 11th for this test, though she'll deal much less damage against any other brawler. The Race Test Colette has a normal movement speed like the majority of the brawlers in the game, but at the last stretch of the race, she's able to dash over 10 tiles super quickly, which allows her to finish in 9.4 seconds, which places her for 9th for this test. Sure, she does have to dash back to her original position, but we're just going to give it to her anyway. The Push and Pull Test With Colette's Push It star power, she's able to push enemies an impressive 10 tiles from their original position. The only brawler that can move an enemy further than that is Jean, which means that Colette places second for this test. And now it is time for us to see what Colette's best Olympics event is. Then I'm going to briefly talk about how strong I think Colette is going to be. Colette's best Brawl Olympics event is the attack test. Obviously, Colette's attack doesn't do very much against low HP brawlers, but against Frank with a sponge star power, she's able to deal 3,521 damage with a single attack. That is more damage than Pam hitting all of her shots, it's more damage than a Daryl shooting you at close range, and it's even more than an attack from 8-bit when he's powered up by his turret. This is more damage than any other brawler can do with a single attack, which means that Colette takes first place for the attack test. Now let's talk about how strong I think Colette is going to be. I think she's going to be terrible. <laughs> I could be totally wrong about this, but I think that she is going to be one of the worst brawlers in the game. Now, you should take that with an absolute big fat grain of salt because I've only played her against bots in the developer build, but she is terrible in 1v1 situations with her attack because she can't finish off any brawlers on her own. She's incredibly vulnerable to auto-aimed attacks when she uses her super on enemy brawlers, and I plan on talking more about her in my 100% honest review video where I'm gonna share basically all my thoughts on this update, but I really don't think she's going to be very good. With that said, I love the idea behind her mechanics, and I think that she is my new favorite brawler personality-wise. I just think Supercell is going to need to do some significant buffs to make her viable, not even just in the competitive meta, like everywhere. Like, seriously. <laughs> for now, I'd have to place her in the F tier for every game mode, with the exception of Gem Grab, where she's B tier. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about Colette, so let me know your thoughts on how strong she will be. Subscribe for more update information as soon as I can give it to you. This update, maybe, maybe not, but for sure in future updates. Use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. And for now, this is Kairos. I'm ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.